Now, if you're brand new to Blender, have never touched it before, never installed it, you can skip this first part, go to the timestamp on the screen because this part won't apply to you. But if you've downloaded Blender before or you have it on your computer, what we wanna do is just start with a fresh install. I usually do this every few months. I just get a completely new Blender installation, basically. I completely nuke everything just to make sure there's no bugs and I just get the most up-to-date version, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and uninstall the most recent version I have here. And for me, that is Blender 4.0.2. I'm just gonna go here in Windows. You can do the same thing in Mac. I don't know how to use that stuff. I stick with Windows. We're gonna go here to uninstall. The process should be you know, mostly the same. We're gonna go ahead and uninstall Blender. Just um, let it do its thing. Shouldn't take too long. A lot of people, what they do is they uninstall Blender and then just stop there. You can't do that. I'm gonna show you the second step after you've installed Blender. So let me just wait for this to finish. All right, next thing you wanna do is go to the hard drive location that I'm showing you on the screen right now. Uh, usually this is just gonna be on Windows, the local disk, uh, your name or whatever your computer's name is, app data, roaming, and then you're gonna to go to Blender Foundation folder. What we need to do is completely remove the data from the old version of Blender we were using. So you can see I have 4.0 here. After you've uninstalled it, you need to delete this folder as well. This is gonna make sure everything is purged, everything is just completely wiped, so that way when we reinstall a new version, there's no conflicts, everything will be nice and clean. So don't worry about deleting this, you can, you know, re-add everything in the new version we install. You're not gonna really lose your files or anything, so don't worry about that. You'll just have to re-enable the add-ons you had before. So we're gonna go ahead, delete that. This might take some time, or maybe not. Anyways, once that's deleted, you need to reset your computer and make sure you know all the you know data floating around is wiped. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset the PC. So now we're gonna head over to blender.org. Don't do .com or any of that. It's blender.org. We're gonna download the most recent version. As of this recording, it is Blender 4.1. We're gonna click on download. And I'm gonna be using Windows, so we'll click on this button. If you're using Mac or Linux or whatever else is out there, you can click on here. So I'm gonna to go to download Blender 4.1. Give Blender some money if you're feeling generous, you know, five, 10 bucks. It's a completely free and open source software, but um, after all, that's up to you. And once Blender has finished downloading, it shouldn't take too long. We can go ahead, get that installed and uh, get everything set up from scratch. Okay, so we're gonna click on the Blender setup. We're gonna go to next and accept the license agreement. Click on next. And I just leave everything on the default and we're gonna click on install and just wait for this to, you know, install. And once that's installed, it should be on your desktop or wherever you saved it. So we're gonna go ahead and open up the Blender application and get everything set up. So now we need to get the UI set up so you can just follow me. We're gonna go down here and get rid of the timeline. I'm gonna click, drag to the bottom, get rid of that. We can delete the camera by selecting it and pressing the delete key and then also the light. And then we'll press the T key to remove this panel over here. And also what I wanna do is make the cube look a little bit more visually appealing. So the way I do that is I go up here, I change to matte cap, and then I'll go to cavity. I'm gonna set the type to both. And then all you need to do here is just copy my settings, okay? So we're gonna go 1.7, tab 0.7, and then 1.7, 0.7. So for the ridge, it'll be 1.7, valley, it'll be 0.7. And you can customize this if you like, but I think these values make the cube look a lot more visually appealing. And this is gonna help you when you're modeling because you kind of, it'll help your brain visualize the forms a lot better compared to if cavity is turned off, okay? So make sure that's turned on and uh, we should be good to go there. Next, we're gonna go up here to edit and then preferences. We're gonna set up all the settings over here. So first things first, under interface, make sure the resolution scale is set to 1.2. I think I did this off camera, but by default it's set to one. It's a bit too small for me. We'll go to 1.2. And then we're gonna go to themes here and under 3D viewport, make sure you change the face orientation front. We're gonna click on this. Put the alpha value to zero. So that way if uh, the normals are flipped, it doesn't have a red display. It'll just be you know the normal display. If you don't know what I mean, just put this to zero. It doesn't really matter. Then we're gonna go down here and we're gonna change the edge width to Let's go ahead and go into edit mode while we do that. 
So what I'm gonna do here is change the edge width to, it's a bit too big, but you can kind of experiment, see what you like. You can do like two, three pixels, just kind of depends what you want. I think one is fine. For the vertex size, I like to put this to seven. I just think it looks cooler. And then everything else should be fine. You can change the face dot size as well. So if we go to face mode, usually there's, I thought there were dots in face mode. Maybe I'm confused. Anyways, you can change this if you'd like, but the only two I really care about are the edge width and the vertex size here. Everything else uh, doesn't really matter. You can also change the object origin size. You can kind of see there's the origin point. If you want to see that a bit better, you can just max that one out to 10. Again, doesn't matter too much. This is all personal preference. So now we're going to go to viewport. Okay. And under viewport, we're going to change the anti-aliasing to, I'll just do 16 samples. It should be fine. Put this to 4x. It should be fine as well. And also the 3D viewport axis, this thing right here, it's a bit annoying, so I'm going to change this to simple axis, and you can also turn this off if you'd like. I'm just going to put it to simple axis, and then uh, we should be good to go. Also down here, I turn off the auto save. I like to save preferences manually, so we'll just click on that. And then lights, we'll leave this alone. Editing, we'll leave this alone. Animation, we'll leave this alone as well. And we'll set up all the add-ons here shortly. I just want to get the basics out of the way first. Under input, if you... I don't really suggest people use this too much, but uh, you can emulate the middle mouse and you, there's like various things you can do with your keyboard, like emulate numpad if you don't have one. I just use all the advanced technology, like the normal keyboard, the normal mouse. If you have some sort of weird setup, that's something you'll have to look into personally. Again, doesn't really matter too much. Uh, navigation here. Um, this should be fine. I would recommend turning the auto perspective on that should be on by default So that way if we press like three on the numpad, it's automatically going to go into orthographic if this was turned off What's going to happen is it's just going to stay in perspective, which I hate So just make sure you turn this on and again, it should be on by default and we can save that Key map, you can play with this. Usually for spacebar action, I put this to search and I click save. So that way, if I want to search for something, I can just press the spacebar key and search that way. Or I can just press F3 on the keyboard as well. So those are the preferences. Again, uh, we'll set up the add-ons here shortly, but there isn't really much else to do. Also system right here, this is going to depend on your computer, but I'm using a, I think a 3090 right now. So I'm just going to put this to CUDA and I just turn both of these on. And I also change the undo steps. So that way, if I like make a mistake, I can go back. I just max this out. I have a lot of memory on my computer, 64 gigs of RAM. So I'm not concerned about this. And even if you don't have that much memory, you can get away with a much higher number. So I would max this out if you can. And I think that's all we really need to change here. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our HDRI. So um, before we do that, we're just gonna go to Cycles Rendering Engine here and make sure the device is set to GPU. So that way in rendering mode, the uh, GPU is gonna be used. It'll be a lot faster. And I'll just go through some of the basic settings here that you can change. Uh, first of all, let's go in here. The sample count should be fine. Uh, denoise, I always have denoise turned off for the viewport, but turned on for the render because it just makes the viewport look strange if this is on. So I'm going to leave that alone. Lights, advanced, we don't have to worry about that. Light paths, you can probably leave this on default. I'm not going to get too much into all this. Uh, you can leave that on default. If you're using volumetrics, you might need to experiment with this, but this is a bit advanced for this video. Performance, I'm going to go ahead and let's put this to 4096. It should be fine. Leave that on auto detect. That should be good as well. And then under film, we're going to turn this to transparent. So that way when we load in our HDRI, we don't actually see it. So we'll click on that. And that's all we need to change here in this section. Everything else can be left alone. And again, if you're more advanced with Blender and there's other things you want to change, like feel free to do that. I'm just, you know, making this tutorial for people who just want the bare basics, want everything set up and functioning. OK, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go and set up our HDRI. Now, I get my HDRIs from polyhaven.com. They are free. It's a very good website. 
And the default one that we've been using for years is the abandoned slipway HDRI. And I'll link that in the description if you want to download it. I've also recently been using some of the HDRIs from our material works pack. Um, so studio HDRIs and things like that. That'll help you get a bit more realism in your renders as well. But if you just want something default, we're going to use the abandoned slipway. So once you've downloaded that, we're going to click on this button. We're going to go to environment texture and then simply load that in. So I have a folder with a lot of HDRIs here. So I'm just going to go in, abandon slipway, and we'll just leave that alone. And we don't need to change anything else in this area. Next thing I'd like to do is just make the UI like nice and clean. I like a very simple blender UI. This is just personal preference for me. So I might as well show you what I do. First of all, these buttons here are completely useless to me. If I want to zoom in, I can just hold control, middle mouse button and do it that way. Same with this. I can just press shift middle mouse button. I'm not worried about these. So we can go to preferences and under viewport. I think it's in one of these menus here. I always forget where it is. Uh, navigation controls here in interface. We'll turn that off save the preferences, get rid of that. The axis I do like having, so that way I know which direction is positive and which direction is negative. I just think it's more useful. So I'm gonna leave that one alone. Also the text up here, I don't really need that text either, uh, but we don't actually turn that off in preferences. What we do is we go to overlays and we turn off text info right there. So that just makes the UI a little bit cleaner in my opinion. Next, all of these different like prefab menus, whatever you want to call them. I don't use these ever. Maybe you do, but I'm not going to be using them. So usually what I do is I just go in here and then just delete them all. So let me just speed this up. And you can always make your own custom views if you'd like by clicking on this button here. Uh, but I'm just going to leave this, you know, all deleted. Again, I like having a very simple UI. I don't like too much clutter. Another thing I want to do is right click down here and go to scene statistics and then video memory, and then system memory. I like kind of seeing, you know, some of these stats sometimes, especially like the VRAM being used depending on the scene, but you can keep this off if you don't really care about it. Now we're gonna go ahead and install all the Blender add-ons that I use. Now, a lot of these add-ons are paid, but honestly guys, you don't need to spend more than 40 to $100 max for your Blender add-ons. That's gonna get you 99% of what you need. A lot of people get pissed off when they see I'm using paid tools. I don't apologize for it. I value my time. People that win and are successful, they use the right tools for the job. So I'm going to be installing the tools that I use personally. If you use something different, then you know, that's completely up to you. So first thing I'm going to do is go up here to edit and then preferences and we're going to go to add-ons and I'll just list the five main add-ons I use on the screen. It's box cutter, it's hard ops, it is our own plugin, material works, decal machine, and mesh machine. Actually, there's one more. It used to be free, now it's five bucks. It's a machine tools and it's a very good add-on. And these are the main ones I use. If you just use hard ops and box cutter, you'll be able to do like 80 to 90% of the stuff. So don't stress it out. That's really all you need for hard surface modeling. So we're gonna go up here. I've installed the most recent versions. These are constantly updating. So just make sure you have the most recent versions installed. We're gonna go up here to install and get all that loaded in. So the first one here is box cutter. We're gonna click on that button. And then we're gonna do decal machine. I guess they're in alphabetical order here. Click on that. Then we're gonna do hard ops. Wait for that to load and then we're going to do machine tools machine tools is super useful make sure you get this then we're going to do material works this is mainly for texturing this is our own plugin again you don't need it but i'd highly recommend it if you're trying to get cool renders and then we'll go to install and then go to mesh machine and then just click on save preferences and these are the only tools that we really need we're using blender so now you know i could start modeling i could go in here uh, you do need to press alt w to activate box cutter and then you can just kind of get started you go in here and of course you can watch all my tutorials on youtube been uploading for years and you can learn you know how to use all these tools how to model how to do everything but obviously i'm not going to be covering that in today's tutorial now the most important part and you cannot forget this because you're going to have to do all this again if you forget to do it go up here to file 
and then we're gonna go to default and we're gonna click on save startup file. Click on that. So now if we start a new scene, it's just gonna literally reset the scene with everything set up as we just did before. And this is literally all we need to do. Now you're ready to go. I would recommend doing this every few months just to make sure you're not getting any sort of clutter or conflicts with other add-ons. So if your blender is like bugging out, you can always do exactly what I did in this tutorial every few months and you should be good to go. So that's it for today's tutorial. I just wanted to show you how I personally reset Blender and get everything set up from scratch. This is exactly how you do it. One other thing you could do, I don't do this personally, I've never really needed to, but sometimes new versions of Blender don't quite yet have the support for the other add-ons you might be using. So sometimes it's a good idea to run multiple versions of Blender, but you don't really need to do this and I don't update my Blender like that frequently I do it every few months so whenever a new version comes out usually I skip it unless it's a very big update so that's really it that's how you do it and hope the video is useful now if you're new to blender and you need to get started learn all the modeling tools learn how to do everything we do have a free jumpstart program available on our website over 80,000 students have went through this tons of results tons of testimonials so if you want to learn blender as quickly and efficiently as possible i'll link that program below again it is free and you can go through it today so that's it for today's video hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you in the next one